Hey guys, welcome to the EQ tutorial. By the end of this video, you should have a strong foundation on what EQ is, how to use it properly, and why it's an essential tool in your projects. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using my favorite equalizer plugin, and that is the Fruity Parametric EQ2. However, the knowledge that you learn in this video can be applied to any equalizer uh, within any DAW of your choice. Every single sound that you hear is made up of frequencies, and a frequency is a cycle per second. The range that the human ear can detect in audio frequencies is roughly 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. This is called the frequency spectrum. So every single sound that you can perceive falls within this range, and this range is the typical range of most equalizers. 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. Animals like dogs are known to be able to detect frequencies upwards of 50 kilohertz. So if dogs were making music, they'd have a lot more frequencies to worry about than us. So no excuse, humans. Different types of sounds and instruments tend to live in certain regions on the frequency spectrum. For example, drum sounds or percussive sounds like your hi-hats, your snares, your claps, those tend to live up here in the treble and high mid region. Sounds like your leads, your pads, or vocals, or guitars, stuff like that, those tend to live in this mid region right here, low mid to high mid. And sounds like bass lines and your kick drums tend to predominantly live down here in the sub and bass regions. Of course, all these sounds can bleed over into surrounding regions, but the regions that I just outlined are kind of where most of the frequency content of these particular sounds resides. Let's look at some examples. Here's a kick drum. Now, kick drums are one of the few instruments that actually does have uh, frequency content pretty much throughout the whole spectrum. As you can see, when it comes in, it sort of comes in strongly around the mid region, and then sort of drifts down into the sub region. There's a little bit of treble as well. Take a look. Now the initial part of the kick, the transient or the snap, that's the stuff that's happening from the treble all the way down to the low mid region. The part of the kick that you feel in your chest or in the ground, or if you have a good enough sound system, the what the subwoofer outputs, that's down here in this region around 150 hertz and below. Here's a clap. Now, as you can see, there's a lot more stuff going on in this upper mid to treble region. There's also a little bit happening down here in about the 160 hertz region, and this is kind of giving it a little bit of low end as well. Here's a hi-hat. As you can see, it's much more predominantly high mid to treble, and it sort of just fades out as it gets lower than that. There's really not much going on uh, below the low mid region, and even the mid to low mid, there's just not too much happening there as well. Here's a bass line. Now this particular bass line has a good amount of mid to low mid stuff going on in addition to the sub and bass frequencies. Here's a pluck. So as you can see, lots of mid, good amount of highs to treble, and really no bass. So a sound like this would actually mix really well with your bass stuff since it kind of gets out of the way right here at the low mid section. By now, you should be somewhat familiar and comfortable with the frequency spectrum. So let's talk about EQ. What is EQ? EQ is a tool, technique, and an art for shaping or carving your sounds. Um, it can help eliminate or tame unwanted or resonating frequencies, or it can accentuate the ones that you want. Um, it can help clear up your mix by preventing different sounds from fighting over the same frequency region. And when used in conjunction with compression, it's a very powerful way of processing your sounds to your liking. And by the way, if you haven't seen my tutorial on compression yet, I highly recommend you check that out. I'll give a link to it right here. 
Now, what we have here is what's called a seven band equalizer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These seven bands serve as control points along the frequency spectrum that let you manipulate the sound. Each of these bands have properties associated with them. These properties are frequency, or where along the frequency spectrum you want the sound to be affected, amount, so this is set in decibels. If you look in the top left, as I move this up, you see the decibel count. So a positive number means you're boosting or accentuating the decibels, and a negative number means you're cutting or eliminating certain frequencies at this point. The next property is shape or type. So by default, um, with this equalizer, bands two through six are set as peaking type. So that just means that they look like this sort of bell curve type shape. Bands one and seven are set to shelves. So band one is a low shelf. So as you can see, it looks a little different from band four. Band four kind of sweeps down on both sides as I bring it down, whereas band one sweeps down on one side and then stays down for the entire rest of the spectrum. That's called a shelf. And then band seven is the opposite of band one. It's a high shelf. So when I bring this down, you'll see that it has the opposite effect of a low shelf. It stays down to the right of the spectrum as it's going down. And by no coincidence at all did I create a pair of breasts. Any of these bands can have their shape or type changed at any time. And to do that, you can right click on the band and go to type and it'll show you the list of all the available types. Let's look at some of these. So right now, by default, band one is a low shelf. If we change it to a high pass, we'll see that it's a little different from a low shelf. A high pass basically states that any frequencies above where this band is are allowed to pass, hence the name high pass. The opposite of a high pass, which we're gonna set to number seven, is a low pass. Any frequencies lower than where the band is set are allowed to pass. So basically, again, one and seven are opposite in that one is a high pass, seven is now a low pass. So what's different from a high pass and a low shelf is that a low shelf goes down and then stays at a certain value. A high pass cuts off completely at a certain value. So a high pass, which band one is set to currently, will allow less frequencies to come through because it's completely cutting off the ones that fall to the left of this band. Feel free to go through and play with all the other shapes. Um, there's not too many other ones, but you'll see how they affect the shape of your EQ curve. And you can also play with them with audio, obviously, to see the kind of effect they have in your sound. The next property that each band has has like three names, but they all mean the same thing bandwidth, resonance, or Q, literally the letter Q. This determines how wide or narrow your band is affecting the sound. Uh, in this equalizer, there are two ways of affecting this value. If you come down here to this BW knob and you move it up and down, you can see it changing the width of this band. My preferred method is to come over to the band itself and mouse over and just use the mouse wheel. So something like this is a much narrower band and will affect only a certain limited number of frequencies versus something like this, which is a much wider band. This will affect a lot more surrounding frequencies at a exponentially less rate as it moves further away from this band. Another parameter that this equalizer gives you per band is how steep you want each slope to be. So for example, with band number seven, I'm gonna come down and go to order and you'll see that it's on two by default. Two is the gentlest slope that you can have in this equalizer. Um, so if I change it to something like steep eight, you'll see that it creates a very steep slope and basically any treble that comes to this point is really not gonna pass this equalizer band. So this band is gonna sharply cut anything right at the 5,000 Hertz range. If I change it to something like gentle four, you'll see that it's a much gentler slope closer to two but not quite as gentle and this is just one of the many ways you can sort of shape each of these bands 
And of course, in conjunction with that steep setting, you can play with the bandwidth as well to really hone in on a customized slope for your liking. Now, just to quickly recap, we've got shape or type, which can be set up here as well. We've got amount, and this is in decibels. Again, lower means you're cutting, higher means you're boosting. We've got frequency, so this is where along the spectrum you want the band to affect. And then you have bandwidth, aka Q or resonance the narrowness or width of the band and then finally if you right click and come to order you also have the steep option using these five parameters across up to seven bands can really help you shape and carve sounds to your liking now just remember that EQing is absolutely an art there is no right or wrong way to EQ a sound Everything you do in an equalizer, similar to how it's done in a compressor, is done to taste. It all depends on what you're trying to accomplish or what sound you're going for. Now, before I end this video, I'll show you just one example of a sound that I would personally EQ depending on what project it would go in. So let's take a look at this sound. So as we can see, down here around 196 Hertz there's a resonating frequency now let's say that I had some sort of bass sound that took up that frequency range as well or I just didn't like that hum that it was providing at this frequency range so I'm gonna show you how I would EQ and cut that out so let's go ahead and play it now typically what I would do is get a band and bring it down over the level and shape it to a pretty narrow band because it's a very narrow frequency that we're trying to cut out and I would just bring it down say to about this level to really tame this frequency that's coming through let's take a listen now I'm gonna flip that over to the B state so we can hear the change that we make just like with compressors there's an A and B compare so I'm going to hit this button over here, and then I'm going to play the sound again, and we'll hear the unaltered state. Then I'm going to flip it back to the altered state. Now, since I'm cutting pretty much the lowest frequency that's coming out of the sound, what I'd rather do in this case is just go ahead and use my first band to create a low cut. So that way... I can cut out pretty much everything starting around this region here. So anything to the left of, say, 240 hertz, I want to get rid of. So let's do that instead. Now, as you can hear, that resonating frequency is gone. And what we've done by cutting out all the frequencies below 337 hertz is we've made the sound quieter. So just like compression, what you can do is when you alter the nature of a sound or the dynamics, you can go ahead and restore the volume to close to what it was before. So let's do that. So now, just like a compressor, I can go to the B state and compare what I have done uh, in this equalizer to the unaltered state. So let's do that. Every single sound has its own special requirements or needs of equalization depending on the situation or project that you're working in. So there's really no way that I or anyone else can tell you how to equalize every single sound. Um, so what I recommend you do is you get comfortable with equalization, get good at using the tools that I've shown you and the techniques, and before you know it, equalizing will become second nature to you and you'll start equalizing things exactly to your liking. Combined with compression, it's a very powerful way of processing sounds and making them sound really good in the mix. 
and I plan to do a video or series of videos in showing you how to process certain sounds like kick drums, pads, leads, vocals, um, all sorts of things. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, if you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Um, there'll be much more awesome videos to come. And if you have any suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see, please let me know. Otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next video.